Thanks, uh, Steve. Uh, transportation is right now in the crosshairs uh, of both the supply and the demand of, of, this, uh, of this problem that we're seeing as the perfect storm is brewing. And uh, it's kind of interesting because what the industry does with transportation, whether it be the vehicle sector or the airline sector or the rail sector, of which we're going to hear about in a few minutes, is really going to challenge, uh, challenge the demand uh, curve. What technologies, whether they be electric, fuel cells, alternative fuels, uh, or if we're going to have to give up, the, uh, Peter set it up well in terms of what's happening in China and India is going to cause the curves to go off, off the chart. And I think as this industry responds, some of the businesses are either going to make a lot of money or going to lose their shirts. And I think we're going to see a shaking out of, of the industry, the transportation industry, as classically we've known it. Uh, and it'll be, it's a very exciting time in the industry as powertrains and, and other technologies come into being. Uh, our first speaker, which introduces, uh, takes a look at it from the dimension of aviation fuel, is Dr. Roger uh, Bedzik. Uh, he is the founder and president of Management Information Services, a Washington, D.C.-based economic and energy research firm. He's held a number of uh, positions in both public and private sectors, academic areas, including special advisor on energy uh, in the office of the Secretary of the Treasury. He was co-author of, of the Peaking of World Oil Production, the Hirsch Report, and, and the following uh, report, Economic Impact of Liquid Fuel uh, Mitigation Options. Uh, please welcome uh, uh, Roger. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to spend a few minutes this morning talking about the uh, potential impact of uh, peak oil on the aviation sector and some of its broader ramifications. What I'll do this morning is uh, take a look at uh, the current uh, long-range aviation forecasts that are out there, um, analyze some of the major drivers for the forecasts, sort of uh, reverse uh, engineer some of them and drive some alternative forecasts based on some different assumptions discuss the uh, wider implications of this and identify some of the key uh, issues and concerns we have to worry about. In preparing for this, uh, we reviewed the uh, major long-range aviation forecasts that are available, FAA, Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier, uh, et cetera. Uh, without exception, they all say, uh, the kind of bad pun here, the sky's the limit. All these forecasts say that all aspects of aviation are forecast to grow very rapidly everywhere over the next quarter century. Passenger traffic, freight and cargo, all sorts of jets, aviation miles and revenues, new aircraft, airports, airport industrial parks, infrastructure, uh, and so forth. Many states and regions are betting their economic future on expansion of uh, airports and airport uh, infrastructure. The forecasts almost compete in projecting how fast everything will grow. For example, here's the Federal Aviation uh, U.S. Uh, forecast through 2020, uh, passenger traffic, and this is true of all the forecasts, passenger traffic growing faster than GDP, passenger revenue miles growing faster than passenger traffic and air cargo revenue is growing faster than everything uh, else. Notice here, the only thing that isn't growing is aviation fuel costs. Uh, they, they still, the FAA is still predicting that, and these are real costs, by the way. They're still predicting that aviation fuel costs will decrease about 1% a year, compounded over the next 12, 13, 14 years. So much for peak oil, huh? Uh, the world forecasts are even more uh, uh, ambitious, uh, both in total and when you look at um, specific countries such as China and India, for example, you're seeing forecasts of 8, 10, 12 percent a year every year through 2026. Uh, for an audience this sophisticated, I do not have to tell you what 10, 12 percent compounded growth is for 20 years. That's a lot of growth. This, uh, graphing this on a simple graph uh, over the past uh, 40 or 50 years, we see that the only actual dips in the rate of growth of, uh, in this case, uh, passenger revenues was during the first Gulf War and right after 9-11 and SARS and all that. Uh, the, uh, the forecast here, you can see, it's just uh, up, 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 and, and up through, uh, through the next uh, 20 years or so. Now the question becomes, what will peak oil do uh, to the aviation industry? And we, we did an extensive survey of the literature not, not too extensive because there's not, not that much out there, but there's a general presumption that increased oil prices will devastate the uh, aviation industry, our children will not fly, uh, economic collapse of the aviation sector, no more fresh strawberries in February. Similarly, the uh, 
recommended uh, solutions for this in the literature, regulatory limits on air travel, limiting new airports and infrastructure, a restriction of flights to trips more than 500 miles, elimination of first and business class so you can squeeze more people on the planes, redirection of air cargo to other transport modes, massive fuel conservation and efficiency, revised ground operations, improved traf air traffic control, more efficient routing, uh, uh, et, et cetera. So the, the, the presumption is it's, it's a pretty grim uh, uh, situation facing the av aviation industry and some very drastic remedies may be required or may be forced on the sector. Uh, commercial airlines are certainly concerned about rising uh, fuel costs. Last year, in 2006, for the first time, fuel costs on average exceeded those of labor costs uh, to the airline. Fuel costs are now about 26, 27 percent of total airline costs. Uh, aviation fuel costs have risen rapidly. In fact, they've tripled over the past four years, and when the data for 2007 comes in, it'll probably be even uh, worse. Uh, here's an interesting uh, statistic you may want to take away. According to EIA, the fuel requirements for U.S. civilian aviation are increasing rapidly, and by 2030, they may be equivalent to nearly half of total U.S. domestic oil production. They may total, on the basis of these forecasts, uh, just the requirements for U.S. Civ civil aviation in 2030 may total upwards of 40 to 45 percent of total forecast U.S. domestic oil production in that year, to give you a magnitude of, of the, uh, the scale here. However, contrary to the perception that high oil prices will destroy the aviation industry, uh, there's a saying that, that uh, the aviation industry is the canary in the coal mine, if you wish, with respect to peak oil. Well, this is one damn healthy uh, canary. Air travel in the past three years is strong, represents the strongest recovery in history. Aviation growth in China is unprecedented. Airlines have finally returned to profitability. New airlines are being started up all the time, and some are spectacularly successful. The Boeing 787 is the best-selling aircraft in history. Airport industrial parks infrastructure are indeed very powerful, profitable economic and job development machines uh, for city, states, uh, and region. The current problem, as, as I'm sure all of you recognize, uh, we, we, if you've traveled in the past year or two, is excess demand. The aviation infrastructure simply cannot keep up with the demand for it. And all of this has occurred over a period when aviation fuel prices have tripled, and some contend Oil has already peaked. So what's going on here? The hard reality is that even at current levels, fuel costs are a modest percentage of total airline costs. As I mentioned, something in the range of 25, actually somewhat less than 30 percent. So, so even a doubling of fuel prices may only increase ticket prices, according in, in, this, in this calculation, by less than 30 percent. Today, I can fly from uh, the West Coast, Washington, D.C., nonstop to the, west, to, to, the, uh, to the East Coast, nonstop to, uh, to L.A., to the West Coast, Normal ticket uh, for just a couple weeks in advance would have you for $150 or even less. Uh, fuel price, fuel prices double, ticket prices may increase to maybe $190. This would still be an extremely low price. There, there are many other factors, airline cost structure, airport charges, taxes, overhead, uh, capacity factors, et cetera, that are, are much, even today, much more uh, important than fuel prices to, uh, to aviation. And, and again, note that the only Aviation growth slumps in the past half century resulted not from fuel price increases, but from the 1991 Gulf War and the 9-11 and SARS problems. Thus, focusing on the direct impact of increased fuel prices on aviation may be looking through the wrong end of the telescope. The real issue here, what we really have to uh, concentrate on, all of the, all the studies we reviewed find that aviation growth is driven primarily by demand, GDP, business revenues, disposable income, and so forth. As long as these are rising, uh, demand for air travel will go, grow rapidly. Passenger traffic grows faster than GDP, passenger revenues grow faster than passenger traffic, and so forth. However, on this basis, and this is, this is where we're, we're doing some alternative forecasting here, we assume that causality works in both directions, that if these, these, these drivers of aviation growth uh, grow faster than, than GDP, then if GDP growth levels off or even goes negative, aviation will be disproportionately af uh, adversely affected in, the, in a negative sense. It is thus the peak oil-induced economic effects that will do the greatest damage to the aviation industry. And this is the real importance, I think, of peak oil for aviation. We sent the reverse engineer the current uh, aviation forecast, assumed oil peaking in 2008, which is not a prediction, developed two scenarios, optimistic and pessimistic, on how sensitive GDP growth is to uh, 
a leveling off in the supply and then gradually a, a decline in the price uh, in, in the supply of oil. Uh, either uh, GDP declines either 1% annually or 2% annually. In both scenarios we assumed on the, in a negative sense about the same relationship of uh, the aircraft demand, uh, aircraft demand factors uh, as on the positive side. Thus in both scenarios passenger traffic declines faster than GDP, revenues faster than traffic, air cargo declines faster than either and so forth. This is what our, our forecasts look like um, graphically. You see an uh, inflection point in about 2008, and uh, the, the width between the forecasts gets uh, larger and larger as you approach uh, 2026. And, and in that, that terminal year of the forecasts, the current forecasts are talking about passenger revenues of uh, upwards of 12 trillion RPKs uh, by 2026. Our forecasts are looking at uh, revenues in the range of three to four trillion uh, RPKs. Quite a difference uh, in something less than 20 years. Uh, more graphically, this is what the different percentage um, increases or decreases look like under the alternative scenarios. Instead of uh, traffic revenues and, and air cargo revenues growing at between 150 and 200 percent over the next 15 or 16 years or so, uh, they decline by upwards of 50 percent. Uh, this is quite, uh, quite, quite a difference, obviously, especially as you get to the out, uh, the out years. So what are the implications for the aviation industry? The impact of peak oil in all aspects of the aviation will be severe due to, due to GDP impacts. The bottom line here is aviation will likely be transformed from a rapidly growing industry to one in decline. Chaos is likely throughout the industry, chronic excess capacity, hundreds of billions of dollars of in, in, in investments in all aspects of the aviation industry will be, quote, stranded. Some airlines may disappear or may have to be rescued by their governments. Many airport and aviation infrastructures will have to be canceled. The bonds for airports, et cetera, will likely default, cascading throughout the financial sector. I'm sure, I think that pressure will mount for re-regulation of aviation uh, in this country and many others. However, and here, it, the problem is even mo much more serious than that. The problems will cascade well beyond the aviation sector. What are the implications here? Well, a lot less people are going to be traveling. I think this has ominous implications for travel-dependent industries and regions, which are currently and expected to be the most rapidly growing, certainly in this country. Tourism, recreation, theme parks, destination resorts, the gaming industry, specific cities and regions dependent on travel, Orlando, Las Vegas, Vail, Aspen, Hawaii, and, and so forth. These industries and regions will probably lose trillions of dollars in revenues and millions of jobs. However, it gets even worse. It's the GDP, stupid. The most important implication of a declining aviation industry is a factor that is causing it, peak induced decline, peak oil induced declining GDP. And this is what we really, really have to be concerned about. Every major industry will be adversely affected, many of which are more critical than aviation, agriculture, healthcare, manufacturing, emergency services, and so forth. When the crunch comes, will these be given priority for available liquid fuels? Ask yourself the question, I think, is to answer it. What's more important, food or cheap airfares to Las Vegas and Vail? If so, the implications for the aviation industry are even more severe. For example, available liquid fuels may end up being used in other sectors due to either price or allocation, some kind of priority, rationing, uh, uh, differential price uh, scale, um, what have you. Conclusions then uh, that we come to, first, current aviation forecasts are unrealistic. I just don't, don't think that we're going to see the aviation sector growing at 8, 10, 12 percent uh, a year annually worldwide for the next 20 years. I think it's unrealistic is almost a kind word for it. The direct effects of fuel prices are much less important for aviation than the impact on GDP and travel and cargo demand. Aviation sector must indeed accelerate fuel efficiency and fuel, send fuel alternatives uh, and so forth. However, these are necessary but not sufficient. Uh, again, if when the crunch comes, the, the, the aviation sector may find itself relatively low on a priority scale. The basic finding, I think, is that peak oil will transform the aviation sector from a rapidly growing to a declining industry. Some aviation firms will survive and adapt, others uh, will not. The implications are dire for aviation and all travel dependent industries. The implications for world economies of the implied declining GDP are severe. Nevertheless, a large aviation industry will survive and quote, forecasts of its death have been greatly, greatly exaggerated. And we indeed will still be able to get fresh strawberries in February, 
They're going to be fewer and they'll be much more expensive. Even under my dire scenarios uh, that I ran through here quickly, the level of, of aviation travel and revenues by the terminal year of the forecast, 2026, it's much less than is being forecast, but it's about at the, at the, the level uh, they were in the early 1990s, which was, a, you know, there was an awful lot of travel and revenues in the airline sector 12, 13, 14, uh, 15 years ago. So again, the airline sector will not be rapidly growing, it'll be declining, but it's not the uh, end of it either. Recommendations wrapping up here. We need a lot more research uh, required in the drivers of aviation growth. Uh, forecasts in, in, in both directions. Much more research required in the relationship between peak oil and, and GDP. Um, I, I can somewhat immodestly say here that what you've just seen is probably the most comprehensive analysis uh, of this issue that has ever been done because it's, pro it's simply the only one that has ever been done. There's really nothing out there in the literature. As I mentioned, all the forecasts are compete with each other on how fast everything's going to grow. Governments uh, should indeed increase transportation fuel efficiency and initi initiate substitute liquid fuels mitigation options. There's action required on the, both the demand side uh, and the supply side. However, in, in concluding, viable mitigation options, again, on both the demand side and the supply side, to lessen impacts of peak oil on GDP and the aviation sector do exist. However, this is the, the theme of all the reports we, we uh, worked on for, the, for DOE and everything we've been saying for the past four or five years. However, these must be instituted well in advance of oil peaking to be effective. If any of you have read our reports, we said at least a decade and probably two decades in advance. I'm afraid that for the aviation sector and, and most of the rest of the economies of the world, time is not running out. It's probably run out. Thank you.